Okay, so today we're going to be talking about vitamin D. What is it? Where do we get it from? What happens if we don't have enough of it? And is there a link between COVID-19 and vitamin D deficiency? Let's find out. So vitamin D was discovered in 1920 when they were searching for a cure for rickets, which is a painful childhood bone disease. And within 10 years, foods were being fortified. And within the USA and Europe, rickets has become astonishingly rare. So that's great news. But then we continue to learn more about vitamin D and find out it was more than just a cure for rickets. We discovered it's actually a hormone um, and it isn't quite an essential nutrient because we can make our own vitamin D if we have enough sunshine. And in terms of other functions in the body, we know that one of its key roles is helping the body absorb calcium in order to build strong bones. But also, muscles need it to move and nerves need it to communicate with the brain and there's more and more research showing that vitamin D has a role within the immune function, specifically helping fight off bacteria and viruses, which could potentially include COVID-19. So where do we get vitamin D from? Well, the sun is actually the main source of vitamin D and on a nice sunny day, even just five or 10 minutes in the sunshine with your face and your lower legs and your forearms out in the sun should be enough to fulfill your vitamin D requirements. But of course, unfortunately, we slap sunscreen on or we cover our skin or we live in a country where it isn't that sunny, like the north of England, and in which case it's very difficult to get enough vitamin D from the sun. So we can look to foods. Sure, there are some foods that do contain vitamin D, but not much really. The foods you can look to include things like um, oily fish, like salmon and tuna, eggs, cheese, and then mushrooms actually. Mushrooms are really good. And do you know, if you chop a mushroom up and lay it out in the sun for a little bit before you cook it, that mushroom absorbs more vitamin D that then you can absorb. Helpful tip. Um, but foods are also fortified in vitamin D. So often foods like cereal, yogurts, plant-based milks are all fortified with vitamin D. And of course you can just take your own supplements or have them prescribed from your doctor. And these usually come in the form of vitamin D2, which is ergocalciferol, or vitamin D3, which is cholecalciferol. It doesn't make a difference. Take whichever one you prefer. So what happens to our bones when we don't have enough vitamin D? Well, vitamin D helps the intestines absorb calcium and the body needs calcium to keep the heart and nerves working properly. So if there's not enough calcium in the blood, the body goes and steals it from the bones in order to keep your ticker working, which is very important, but then the bones take the hit. So how big a problem is vitamin D deficiency? Unfortunately, it's really quite huge. In the UK, between January and March, we know that 30% of over 65s are vitamin D deficient and 40% of adults under 65 are vitamin D deficient. And with that deficiency comes rickets in children, osteomalacia in adults, which is the same thing, kind of thin, brittle bones. And also vitamin D is important if, to prevent osteoporosis. And we know that osteoporosis and osteomalacia are risk factors for elderly people having falls and fractures, which then itself becomes another big problem. To protect bone and muscle health, the UK government advises that everyone should have the equivalent of 10 micrograms of vitamin D a day or 400 international units. If you're not getting enough of this through sun and food, then you might want to consider taking a supplement. And the UK government does advise everyone takes a supplement through the autumn and winter months. Some people are more at risk of deficiency, so they may need to take a supplement all year round. And that includes young infants, breastfeeding, mothers, people who cover their skin for cultural reasons, and people who have darker skin, because the melanin find, found within the darker skin means that there's less UV absorption and therefore less vitamin D. So there's been a lot of speculation within the media and actually within the health profession about whether or not there is a link between low vitamin D and increased risk of COVID-19. Now there is quite an overlap between those groups thought to be at risk of vitamin D deficiency and those groups thought to be at high risk of COVID-19. That includes people with chronic diseases. Um, it also includes older age people and um, people from black and minority ethnic heritage. Interestingly, children are at risk of vitamin D deficiency, but don't appear to be high risk of COVID-19. So with all this speculation, uh, NICE, which is the National Institute of Clinical Excellence and Health in the UK, did a rapid review of the evidence. They looked at five published studies in peer-reviewed journals, four of which did find an association or correlation 
between low vitamin D and the risk of getting COVID-19. But these studies did not account for other um, comorbidities, they didn't account for BMI, um, they didn't account for ethnicity, and when these were taken into account, these other confounders, there actually was no causal link. And the one study that did take these confounders into consideration found no causal link between low vitamin D and risk of COVID-19. So in summary, NICE deci decided to say there is no evidence to suggest there's a link between COVID-19 and vitamin D. However, they did say we should continue to make sure we're having enough vitamin D. And if you're not getting enough through the sun and the diet, then you should consider supplementing it. So although the evidence for vitamin D deficiency and COVID-19 is not there suggesting there's a link at the moment, there is emerging evidence coming up about the link of various cancers and vitamin D deficiency. This is all upcoming evidence and there's not enough for me to make any specific conclusions yet, but it's all very interesting. And I think everything that we're learning makes me think <laughs> and recommend to you guys that we definitely should be making sure we're having enough vitamin D. If you're not getting enough from the sun and the food, which people like me living in the north of England, we're probably not, we should be supplementing it with just over-the-counter, don't bother going to your GP if you're otherwise well, um, over-the-counter vitamin D, take it every day, give it your children, make sure your granny's having it, um, and it may keep us feeling healthier, keep our bones healthy, it may help our immune system, um, it may help us pr prevent getting other respiratory or viral and bacterial infections. Um, so that's my key point. Lots of evidence to come, but let's all make sure we're taking our vitamin D supplements. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you learned a lot. I'm gonna be doing a few more videos on um, health supplements, so do stay tuned. Please do like and subscribe and you can learn lots more. Thanks, bye.